My name is Lila. I met Gilbert at work and we got married after dating for a year. Now, I am a stay-at-home mom living with our three-year-old daughter, Aria. I am in my late thirties, but thanks to my energetic Aria, I feel more physically fit than before. Honestly, that's what keeps me going these days. Ever since Aria started preschool, I have been on the receiving end of Natalie's harsh treatment. It's gotten so bad that I have to spend all my free time while Aria is at school at my in-law's house. The issues began when Aria started preschool. Out of the blue, I got a message from Natalie, telling me to come to my in-law's house immediately. When I got there, she handed me a broom and said, Let's start with the entrance. Stunned, I just stood there and Natalie glared at me and yelled, What are you waiting for, clean? Don't think you can take it easy just because Arya's in school. It's a wife's job to look after her husband's family home. I have been cutting you slack, but not anymore. After wrapping up the cleaning of the entrance, I was tasked with cleaning the hallway, toilets, and bathrooms. Then came meal preparations, tidying up, and even cleaning the storeroom and washing windows. I couldn't help but wonder why I had to do all of this. Natalie's overwhelming presence made it impossible to speak up. By the time I finished cleaning like a professional, it was time to pick up my kid from preschool. Exhausted and having skipped lunch, I left my in-law's house. From then on, Nellie started summoning me regularly, piling on chores until the last possible minute before I had to leave to pick up my child. I started resenting that this was eating into a quality time with Aria. I had, of course, talked to Gilbert about this the first time Nellie called me over. Mom's right, you know, I work hard for the family, you lazing around at home makes no sense. He said laughing dismissively. Lately, I have felt that Gilbert is looking down on me. He doesn't involve himself in household matters or with Aria. We can live because I'm earning money. He keeps telling me, ordering me around. Worst of all, he once smirked and said, If you don't listen, I can cut down the living expenses, you know. I have thought about divorce multiple times, but considering Aria, I couldn't take that step. I felt I had no right to separate Arya from her father, especially when I have no money to support us. My savings have dwindled because of wedding expenses, honeymoon, and the daily needs after becoming a housewife. I had no choice but to endure for Arya's sake. That's how I lived each day. However, a few weeks after I started being summoned to my in-law's house, Olivia got married. In isolation, that sounds like good news, but because Olivia became a housewife, she started visiting my in-laws more frequently. She hadn't been fond of us marrying before her and she directed her anger at me, not her younger brother Gilbert. Every time we met, she would lecture me for nearly an hour or how I was lacking as Gilbert's wife or how unattractive I was as a woman. I used to tolerate it by suppressing my feelings and just agreeing, but Olivia didn't seem pleased with that either. If I'm this submissive to Natalie, there is no way Olivia finds it amusing. As if handling Natalie's demands wasn't enough, Olivia joined in, treating me like a housekeeper on days when I finished cleaning my in-laws' house quickly. She even made me clean her house. Lila, your hair looks like bed hair. Stop showing your ugly bare face and put on some makeup. If you keep this up, Gilbert will get fed up and go find another woman. <laughs> After dropping off Aria and rushing to finish the errands, I arrived at my in-law's house. Olivia was waiting to ambush me at the entrance. If only you were having an affair, life would be so much easier. She said, I couldn't help but think how true that might be. My hair is pulled back in a messy bun while Olivia's is beautifully curled from root to tip. Her makeup is flawless and her nails are perfectly manicured. 
Her husband works at a top-tier company, and it's evident that they live comfortably. When was the last time I went to a beauty salon? I can't even remember. I have been putting off getting a haircut for a long time. Neither time nor money has been on my side. On the days when Gilbert is away, I sometimes get called to my in-laws' house. They never kill me over when he's around, so Gilbert must be in on it. Each time I leave Aria with my parents and head over to my in-laws' place. I have become increasingly distant from the people around me, but I still keep in touch with Kenelyn, a colleague from work. Kenelyn has been my friend since before I started dating Gilbert, and she's always been a good listener. But I can't bring myself to talk to her about my current situation. So when I received a surprising message from her, I was momentarily stunned. Long time no see, just left a party and Gilbert seems to be a great dad. He does the cleaning and laundry and is very involved in childcare. Not many husbands like that around, so cherish him. Let's catch up sometime. A good dad? Cleaning and laundry? Childcare? I was baffled. Was she talking about someone else? Before I knew it, I was calling Caitlin. Curiosity got the better of me and I wasn't even thinking about the late hour or her convenience. Hi, it's unusual for you to call this late. Is Arya asleep? Hearing Caitlin's voice after so long was nostalgic, but that wasn't the last thing on my mind. Uh, what did you mean by that message? I got straight to the point. Huh? Uh, is something wrong? Gilbert was bragging about it at the party. According to Caitlin, Gilbert had been boasting at the office party. During the week, I had come home to handle the cleaning and laundry, and weekends were for quality time with our daughter, Aria. Gilbert used to help around the house when we first got married, but that changed once Aria was born. I have asked for his help multiple times, but he never lends a hand. In fact, he might have stopped helping long before Aria was even born. It's frustrating that Gilbert does nothing around the house. Is he really just lying just to get some praise? I feel foolish for enduring this. I am looked down upon by Gilbert, bossed around by Natalie and Olivia, and still I tolerate it. Overwhelmed by my feelings, I found myself tearing up while still on the phone with my friend Caitlin. What happened? Is everything okay? Startled by my sobbing, Caitlin immediately asked what was wrong. After hesitating for a moment, I decided to confide in her about Gilbert's attitude and the harassment from Natalie and Olivia. That sounds really tough, she said. Hearing those words, my tears flowed even more freely. Caitlin stayed on the line with me until I had calmed down. I'm always here if you need to talk, but seriously, what is he trying to achieve by lying? Anyway, it's getting late and you should get some sleep. Gilbert will be home soon, right? When I stopped crying, Caitlin said, take care, and hung up the phone. I realized an hour had gone by talking to her. I had a message from Gilbert saying, the party's still going on, so feel free to go to sleep. Something felt off. Just like Caitlin said, why would he lie? Was it because he wanted praise? I couldn't really tell. That night, I couldn't sleep with all the thoughts going through my head. I woke up early than usual the next morning and Gilbert still hadn't come home. My suspicions started to turn into certainties. Hey, uh, sorry to call so early, but could you do me a favor? I called Caitlin and asked her something. Three months had passed since then. Life was still the same being bossed around by Natalie and Olivia like a housekeeper, but it didn't bother me as much. Freedom was just around the corner. Knowing that made things easier. Today, just as I suspected, Gilbert told me he would be late coming home from an anniversary party. Uh, don't wait up for me. He said, eyes glued to his phone and wearing his favorite shirt. 
To that, I mastered the biggest smile I could and saw him off with, Have a great time! It's your fault we are unprepared for Christmas since you didn't show up on Christmas Eve. Get the preparations done now. When I greeted Nellie with a Merry Christmas, she yelled back without any niceties. Don't forget the roast turkey. It's not Christmas if I don't eat that. Olivia snatched the Christmas cake I brought and headed to the dining room followed by Gilbert. They opened a bottle of champagne and cheered, Merry Christmas. Despite Aria not being with us because she was at her grandparents, Natalie and Olivia didn't say a word. I guess they didn't care. Make sure to clean really well today. I'll even be extra thorough to make up for you not being here. As if it's not bad enough that my husband is already stressed from work on Christmas, now he has to eat that terrible cake. Make sure you prepare dinner before you go, too. Natalie and Olivia kept coming into the kitchen to make various demands. Still, I obediently said, Okay, got it. Natalie looked a bit suspicious, but Olivia misguidedly said, it's because it's Christmas, which almost made me laugh. By the time everything was done, it was almost evening. All three, who had been drinking since morning, were flushed. As soon as I said, I'm done, my empty stomach growled. Nellie and Olivia burst into malicious laughter. Once you're done cleaning and cooking, get out. There's no food here for you. Both of them said it in perfect unison, as if they had practiced. Uh, sorry about them. Why don't you go home? Scratching his head, Gilbert pointed to the entrance with his chin. He probably thinks of me as nothing more than a housekeeper. I'll soon see you go through hell, so you might as well enjoy yourself now. Do worry about it. With a big smile on my face, I left my in-law's house. A few days later, I got a call. It was from Gilbert. I hadn't gone back home since Christmas and had been staying at my parents with Aria. The message read, when are you coming back? But this wasn't the first time he actually called. Finally, the moment has come. What the hell is going on? Even through the phone, it was clear that Gilbert was furious. What are you talking about? I can understand unless you explain. I faint ignorance. It's about the documents that arrived. It says it's from a lawyer, but you said this up, didn't you? Quit messing around. I responded coldly. Any complaints about demanding compensation from a cheating husband? Yes. What I had sent to Gilbert was a certified letter. I had gathered evidence with Caitlin's help and had a lawyer draft the documents. Ever since I received that call from Caitlin, I suspected Gilbert was having an affair. Throwing back ever since I got pregnant with Aria, Gilbert had been coming home late, claiming it was due to overtime. I have to make money for the family, he would say. But I began to suspect that it might be an excuse to cover up his affair. I asked Caitlin to investigate whether Gilbert was actually working late on the days he claimed he was. Despite the inconvenience, Caitlin happily agreed and had been keeping tabs on him. My suspicions were confirmed. Gilbert was having an affair with a colleague. Probably the lie about being a family man who takes the lead in household chores was to appeal to his affair partner. That colleague seemed to openly wish for a husband like Gilbert. The photos sent by Caitlin were evidence enough, but I had also planted a voice recorder in Gilbert's bag during our anniversary party. Conversations with his colleague were clearly recorded, leaving him no room for excuses. On the other end of the phone, Gilbert was desperately trying to fabricate a story, but once I played the recording, he fell silent. By the way, I also filed a claim against her. She begged me to forgive her because we're breaking up, but no mercy here. Poor thing, looks like you are the only one serious about this. I added more salt to the wound. 
but it's not over yet. Oh, uh, can you let Nally and Olivia know that they can mock me only until today? What? What are you saying? Hearing Natalie and Olivia's name, Gilbert seemed flustered. The recording has more. You can figure out what it is, right? I've gathered all the evidence. I'm sending Natalie and Olivia down with you. The rest of the recording revealed that Natalie and Olivia had been encouraging Gilbert's affair. Natalie and Olivia weren't just bossing me around. They were also helping Gilbert with his affair. They always summoned me to my in-law's home on days when Gilbert was out just to keep me from going anywhere else. I reported their harassment and their role in Gilbert's affair to my father-in-law and Olivia's husband. My father-in-law, who's been working far away, should be arriving at the in-law's place soon. As for Olivia, she's probably getting served with divorce papers right about now. When Gilbert called begging for forgiveness, I simply told him, talk to my lawyer from now on, and hung up. After that, I successfully secured the agreed-upon amount for damages, property distribution, and child support for Aria. Caitlin told me that Gilbert now and did got unceremoniously dumped by his colleague he was having the affair with. Natalie and Olivia are both headed for divorce too, and apparently they're all living together now. Natalie, who's always been a housewife, Olivia, who's been living it up since she got married, and Gilbert, now drowning in debt. Even combined, their lives are a struggle. I have heard Natalie and Olivia had to get jobs to make ends meet. As for me, I moved back in with my parents and am living a much more relaxed life with them and Arya. Arya's grown close to my parents and now I can finally use the time and energy I used to waste on Natalie and Olivia for myself and my home. I have got some breathing room, both mentally and physically. From now on, I'm planning to make the most of my time with Arya.